I do this video every year and I'm so excited to keep up the tradition and do it again this year. It's time for the mid-year book freakout tag. Also, I think we need to bring more tag videos back because I love them. They also take a lot of pressure off as content creators to like really think about what you make. You just kind of answer some questions. It's really nice. So if anyone has any good tags that they've seen lately, let me know because I want to do them. I do know there is a fantasy romance reader tag that I do have planned and that one seems perfect for me, but I need more. I love tag videos. I feel like they're kind of aren't as prevalent as they used to be on booktube and I want to bring them back. But on to the mid-year book freakout tag. This is just a really good time now that we are halfway through the year, which is literally insane to me, to just check in with reading and see what's going on. I just think generally in the beginning of the year, I set my Goodreads goal low at 50 and I really just wanted to focus on reading longer fantasy stuff. And then I had some family and work things come up and I was just really, for a while, I was stressed. Like I wasn't you know, super struggling or anything like that, but I was definitely really stressed and I just needed easy light books that were really fun to just kind of get my mind off of everything. So I've been picking up easy, short, quick books, which is really fun and I really enjoy those books. But now I feel in a better place to kind of get back into my longer books that I can really sink my teeth into and not have to rush while reading and not really focusing on the number of books I've read and instead just focusing on the books. So that is what we're gonna do today and we're gonna talk, wrap up my reading from the first half of the year and just see what's going on and do this wonderful wonderful tag that i love to do every year and to make my life easier i'm only gonna count books that i read up until the end of june so there's only like a few books that i'm not counting on this but it just makes it easier for me to choose you know um so the first question the question on everyone's mind is the best book that you've read so far this year me and the rest of book talk fourth wing by rebecca yaros and I have the sprayed edges. So this book honestly took book talk by storm. It's published by Red Tower Books, which is Entangled Publishing's new new adult fantasy romance imprint, which if you know anything about book talk, like that is the genre that is really thriving on there in the indie market. And I'm glad that at least one traditional publisher is realizing its impact because it is a very big market and people want these kinds of stories. Stories that are written in the more traditional YA writing style, pacing, complexity or non-complexity of the text, but really fun, really fast paced and it gets spicy. So in this book we follow Violet Sorengale and she's the daughter of the general and there's all these different uh, quadrants that you can go to in this war college and she thought her whole life she was going to be a scribe like her father and six months before you enter into the quadrants her mother is like just kidding you are going to go into the writer's quadrant and you have to be a dragon writer and this quadrant like pretty much most of the people that enter into it like die on the first day throughout the whole thing. It's a very, very tough, brutal, and impossible world to survive. And Violet also has what is in the modern day Ehlers-Dawn syndrome, but there she's just described as really fragile. She's injured very easily. Um, that's a disorder where you like have hypermobile joints and it just gives you a bunch of other problems. It is a chronic illness. So Violet is basically not made for this environment um, and yet she perseveres. I also have Zayden Ryerson who is the son of the rebel leaders that Violet's mom killed. So obviously they kind of have it out for each other but you know something kind of happens to connect them and that's all I'm going to say and this book was just so fun. It was just a treat to read. Like if you just really want to escape you want fast-paced really fun setting um, with a lot of like action going on good romance good romance good spicy scenes but still enough plot to keep you interested otherwise and dragons i loved the dragons in this they were some of my favorite characters and this book was just amazing i have a whole reading vlog where i read it i think you guys should definitely check it out because i loved making it and i think that this is definitely my favorite for me and the rest of the internet but me included okay best sequel so i looked at this question i go oh no I really haven't read that many sequels this year. So I've read like a lot of romance sequels, which I, those are like interconnected standalones. So I don't really want to consider that for that, this question. So 
For that, I have to say the best sequel that I've read this year is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, and this is actually the third book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, which I read on audio this year and I'm completely obsessed with. It's one of the best YA thrillers that I've ever read. So we have Pip and basically there is this heinous crime that happened in her hometown and she thinks that the accused is not really who did it, who kidnapped this bright young woman and she, you know, was nowhere to be found. So Pip on her school project just sets out to try and solve this murder with the help of the accused brother, Bravi, um, whose family is obviously suffering from the grief and the trauma of this, and she really doesn't believe that Robbie's brother did it. So it's a school project, but she starts digging really deep and starts running into trouble, and it's incredible. And the sequels just keep building and building, and I feel like As Good As Dead, the third and final book in the series, really just wraps everything up so well. Hints that were hinted at in the first book came like full circle all the way back to the end in the third book, and I thought, it wowed me. Like, it really just all came together for me. I definitely will be thinking about this series for a long time. So this book and the sequel, this third in the series, really, I think, was the most impactful for me this year. New release, not yet read. This is just a call out. This is just a call out because I really haven't been reaching for my fantasies and I have so many fantasy sequels to catch up on. So there was a bunch that came out like in February, just like boom, 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 boom. And I haven't read any of them. And I was like, gonna do rereads and stuff like that of the books before and I failed but I do think I should pick them back up again. So firstly we have Chain of Thorns. She's ginormous but she's also beautiful and I ignore my water bottle but I, I clearly am a Shadowhunters fan. Clearly. And I've read all these books. I love the Last Hour series and I haven't read it. This is just, this follows the children of the people from the Infernal Devices, Shadow Hunters in the early 1900s in London, demons and things, and you know, there there's a lot of books in this world, if you don't know. So yeah, this is the latest in it, and I can't believe I haven't read it yet. Self call out, I mean, I really wanted to reread Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron before I read this, and then I read and then of them. But those reading plans, they can be replanned, and I can do it. I can do it. The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which is the follow-up connected duology that's following the Cruel Prince trilogy. I reread The Cruel Prince and The Lost Sister, and then I got halfway through The Wicked King, and that's when, like, my life kind of hit the fan a little bit. So I stopped. But I do think I don't want to complete the year without completing my Cruel Prince reread and reading this book. Especially because Holly Black's books, like, aren't that long, and they're really fun, and I love The Cruel Prince. So... This is, follows Oak, who is Jude's brother, and that's all I want to say because I feel like any more, and that's more spoilers for the Court Brand series. And then the last one that I'm really mad at myself that I didn't read yet is, of course, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I love Ninth House, but Ninth House is really complex, and I don't remember a lot. I don't think I'll be picking this one up soon, just because I feel like it needs to be fall or winter to read it, but maybe towards the end of the year I will pick it up because Ninth House was so so good. It follows um, Alex and she is basically kind of like recruited, I forget, I forget exactly what it is, but she can see ghosts and she has this traumatic past and she is kind of recruited to go and infiltrate Yale secret societies because they're doing shady magic things and it just explodes from there and it's dark and gruesome and I love it most anticipated for the second half of the year. I will be releasing two videos soon, I'm a little bit behind schedule because of vacations and things like that, of my most anticipated fantasies and my most anticipated romances. I do those videos about twice a year. They take a lot for me to prepare, lots of research and time, so those will be coming soon, timely, at least before the end of August. So you will get the full scope of everything that I'm anticipating, but I'll say my most anticipated is Foxglove, which is the sequel to Belladonna, which is a book that I honestly just fell completely in love with last year. We follow Signa, and basically her life has been tragedy after tragedy. She's kind of been bouncing around from like foster parent to foster parent, and she goes to live with her distant cousins at Thorngate, and that family has kind of also been torn apart by tragedy. Signa is also pretty connected to death. She's the only one that can see death, and death is a, an entity, a person, and so she sees the ghost of the matriarch of this family that she's living with and she's like things are not right here like i need you to help solve the mystery of my death and things unfold from there so it's kind of like regency 
mystery thriller dark gothic fantasy romance which like dark gothic fantasy romance is my vibe throne of the fallen is the connected follow-up series to kingdom of the wicked i'll just say the kingdom of the wicked series by carrie maniscalco and now we're following this one was like new adult but this one is being fully published adult thank god and now i think each of the different demon kings so or the princes the demon princes in the seven circles of hell are getting their own book so this one follows prince envy and i loved him in this series and i'm so excited that we're getting like a fully adult kiri maniscalco demon book that's my whole personality and then last but not least is iron flame which is the sequel to fourth wing because the way this ended i needed it immediately this is a plan five book series i'm really excited that they're it seems like they're going to be releasing the sequel is on a six month basis instead of a year basis which is fast but that means for me as a reader i don't have to wait as long in between books because when i put this down i was like where is the sequel i need it okay biggest surprise of the year and definitely the biggest surprise for me is the clicanian series clicanian series i don't know how to pronounce it by victoria adeline i was going on a vacation and i just needed something i could read on my kindle and i'm like what about this alien romance and the concept of this is that there's this world where the men outnumber the females like 20 to 1 and basically their population is dying and so the men kind of like do as much as they can to make themselves attractive partners to the women and marriages are only three months long and it's really kind of like matriarchal because the women have all the choice in who they decide to like have children with and like the goal of the species is to repopulate the planet. So that accumulates in the men going to husbandry school and learning to be a good husband. And it's fun. So then these women from Earth get abducted and find their way onto the planet. And when they're there, um, the women are kind of like awakening the long held dormant like mating inst instinct in the male population. So it's like the faded mage trope. And I love it. It's so much fun. The world is so fun. There's like different areas and cities of the world with like different kind of culture and customs and like the spice is good and they're just like so fun and addicting to read and I definitely really like alien romances. So this series has taught me that I like alien romances like Beyond Ice Planet Barbarians and I literally binged the entire series. The next one comes out end of August and I will be there on August 30th reading that book. New favorite author. I would definitely have to say because I was reading through my Goodreads and I didn't see that many like two new authors that like stood out to me but my favorite new to me authors are Holly Jackson definitely who wrote a good girl's guide to murder because that series was just absolutely stunning amazing and i have nothing but good things to say to it like literally heart pounding just amazed me in every way i will also say victoria aveline because i love her alien romances they're so so fun and i need more of the clahanian series newest fictional crush i i am going to give a boring basic answer zayden ryerson from fourth wing because because like how could I not choose him after reading this book if you've read this book you know what I mean like literally how could I not choose him that would just be a crime not to choose him in second place is Jack from Love Theoretically Ali Hazel just writes these men that are like obsessed with the woman that they're in love with and I am obsessed with that and also he's hot okay I hate this question every year because I don't really cry when I read books and the question is a book that made you cry and I literally wrote in my notes none question mark I like don't cry I like now like none of them have made me cry I get like a little emo sometimes maybe maybe it was a vampire academy that like when I'm listening to the audiobook I find myself much more immersed in like the emotions of it probably because it's like a dramatized reading right so you hear the emotions in the audiobook narrator so I did listen to the vampire academy books on audio so maybe that or maybe did I and like a girl girl's guide to murder I think I just like was kind of like on the verge of tears just because it was like a very serious subject matter is a very heavy subject matter and just like the anxiety like literally i have never had so much anxiety reading a book as i did reading as good as dead i also really want to get physical copies because i love that series so much so like honestly probably an audiobook that i've read i would probably go with Echo girl's guide to murder series i think i don't remember if i was like teary-eyed or not but i've definitely definitely the audiobooks make me more teary-eyed 
than reading physically. A book that made you happy. Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood because I just love her rom-coms. They just make me so happy. Like, they're about women in STEM and I'm a woman in STEM and I'm glad women in STEM have a chance to shine and I love like all of the nerdy jokes and just like how nerdy and like cute it is and it just gives me a chance to like geek out with Allie Hazelwood when I read and I'm obsessed with that and I loved this book so much it made me so happy and then I also have to say The Cruel Prince made me happy um this was my third time rereading it when I reread it this year or third time reading it so it was my second reread I think so I've obviously read this book a lot and it just makes me happy every time because it's like I just love Jude as a protagonist because she was the first female main character that I read that was really just like kind of like that female rage and like didn't care and kind of like cunning and doing whatever she needs to survive in a world that is not kind to her and I really resonated with that and I love Jude and I love Cardin and I love their dynamic I think it was very different than what had been done in the YA fantasy genre before and I don't know this is it's not really a comforting book like there's a lot of political scheming and conniving but I I don't know I just think I think so fondly of this one especially because I've read it so many times. Number 10 is the most beautiful book you've purchased this year. I am a connoisseur of beautiful books and surprisingly these two books I'm about to show are not actually special editions but their covers like just in general are so stunning that I'm obsessed with them. So the first of which is Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. No I haven't read it yet and I've been meaning to because it's just like this anime almost like um studio ghibli like style and it's a cottage core fantasy and it's beautiful and okay i need to read this i know i know i know don't look at me like that um and then the other one is divine rivals by rebecca ross i love rebecca ross dreams lie beneath was one of my favorite books i forget if it was last year or the year before that that i read it um stunning amazing like i love all of her books i've read this one I need to read more but I'm just like enamored with her writing style in general and so when she had Divine Rivals coming out I was so excited and this is the UK cover. This was the last book I got from Book Depository before it shut down. R.I.P. Book Depository. In the arms of the angel. You will be missed. And like I just love the character illustrations. They're so beautiful and the US cover is different. I'm probably gonna get the, a copy of the US one and annotate it and whatever but in the meantime, I do have this UK one, and I don't know if the UK cover came out yet. The US cover for the sequel came out. But this book is kind of going viral on Book Talk, and I'm so happy for Rebecca Ross because she deserves she deserves it. Like her writing is honestly so beautiful. Her stories are so beautiful. If you picked up Divine Rivals and you really liked it, I highly, highly suggest you pick up Dream Fly Beneath because I am obsessed with that book and I think more people should read it. Books you need to read before the end of the year. Well, I already mentioned some of the books that I wanted to read this year haven't yet so those are included but I actually just picked this up yesterday and this is the box set of the new covers of the Miss Bourne trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I have only read Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series and that series is literally amazing. The things he's able to do with the sci-fi genre while still making sense with like our understanding of physics in the world. Chef's Kiss, amazing. I do need to catch up with that series. Found out randomly that there's a fourth book coming out I had no idea about. Anyways, so The Mistborn. The Cosmere is Brandon Sanderson's like huge fantasy world and I want to be in that world. I'm sick and tired of being left out of the party of Brandon Sanderson books. So I bought this box set and I like filming themed reading vlogs so in the future you could potentially see a reading vlog where I read the Mistborn trilogy and I am planning on reading this whole trilogy all the way through and if I like it continuing on and doing that for the rest of The Cosmere because why not? I think that would be a really, really fun thing to do. So this is the only three books that I am confidently right now saying that I 100,000% need to read before the end of the year. So hopefully I behold myself to that promise. And then 12 is book creators that you're loving. I need to kind of get better at making time to watch booktube because I create a lot of it, but I don't always have time to watch. So I've only been watching like a small amount of creators and I want to kind of, you know, expand my repertoire of people that I have on repeat. But I will say I love Taz from Taz is Up Booked, Maddie from By Madison Fox, Keely from The Vampire Keely, Rachel from The Raven Haired Reader, and Tori from Tori Between Pages, and of course Reagan from Peru's Project because she's like the OG in the fantasy space. I especially watch her when I want like more like adult fantasy recs. So those are the people I kind of have on repeat, but definitely leave me some recommendations of some channels that I should check out because I definitely need 
to find some new booktube channels to watch and enjoy. So if you watch this video I am tagging you to do it because I hate tagging people and <laughs> even though the tag video the whole purpose is to tag people. Whatever. So I had a lot of fun filming this even though this room is hot and I'm a little sweaty but it's fine. I Like I said I love tag videos and I was really excited to do this. If you enjoy this video don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps my channel and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.